What's going on YouTube? Jeans here, back again, bringing you guys some more competitive ranked double battles for Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet. In today's video, we are rocking out with an Infernape and Milotic team for the rank ladder in Regulation E. You guys already know the deal. If you do enjoy the content anytime, make sure you support me as a content creator by leaving a like on today's video. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, click that big red subscribe button so you know when all of my videos go live. But before I get started here with today's team preview, gotta give a huge shout out to the team creator, my boy Nico. Thank you so much for making this team. We'll be linking his channel down in the description below. So if you guys want to go check it out a little bit more or go check out the Poke Pace, again, check out Nico's channel. Link is down in the description below. But I know I already showcased Infernape, but that was on the casual ladder. I'm looking to showcase probably all the regulation e pokemon yet again on the rank ladder and some of them that i haven't showcased yet i'll be showcasing definitely a little bit more so if you guys got teams for me leave me in the comment section down below get us meet over on twitter link is down in the description below as well my twitter down there but uh we got articuno getting started here for today's team preview with snow cloak and the bright powder we know this combo from last regulation with obama snow but this time we're pairing up with the brand new probably the best snow setter in the game alone nine tails Articuno's got Blizzard, Freeze Dry, Tailwind, and Terra Blast rocking out with that Water Terror type. We got Alolan Ninetales in our second slot, and Alolan Ninetales is so good. It's got Snow Warden instead of Snow and Light Play on top of that, so Aurora Bell lasts 8 turns instead of 5 turns. Its other 3 moves instead of Aurora Bell are going to be Dazzling Gleam, Freeze Dry, and Protect. In our third slot is going to be the boy, Infernape with Iron Fist and a Clear Amulet, so it doesn't get any stat changes such as Intimidate coming in from Landorus's or Arcanine's. It's got Fire Punch, Drain Punch, Mock Punch, and Protect. Great moveset for Infernape, first turn priority, two stab moves, you gotta love it. Milotic is in our fourth slot. Milotic is just a solid all-around Pokemon. It's bulky, it can hit pretty hard, it can do a lot of different things. It's got competitive as its ability with the Citrus Berry as item, then a great move set of Coil for stat boost. Hydra Pump, I'd rather have Scald, but then Ice Beam and Hypnosis to put Pokemon to sleep. In our fifth slot, we got the one and only Iron Hands, a great fake out user and a great Pokemon within the Trick Room. It has Quirk Drive and Assault Vest with Drain Punch, Wild Charge, Bolt Switch, and Fake Out. In our final slot, we got our Intimidate Pokemon with Landorus, Choice Scarf Landorus, I should say. Great move set of Rock Slide, Terror Blast with the Flying Terror type, Stomping Cantrum, and the U-Turn. Guys, you want to run the scene for yourself? Run the code is that top right hand corner. Let's hop on that ranked double letter. Let's just showcase Infernape in regulation. We're hopping into our first match for today's video, trying to showcase Infernape on the rank ladder. We're going up against a Fire Ogre Pond team with Clefairy and Konomo'o, a top tier combo to set up that Kalinger Soul. Then they're also rocking out with Snorlax and what is that Pokemon called? Milotic and Fluttermane. Did not mention Fluttermane, but who should I lead and how should I get after? Because I could definitely see him leading Clefairy and Konomo'o. That is a solid combo. I could go Ninetales just to set up the Roar Bell because the Roar Bell would be beautiful. Plus your part Fairy type, which would be good. But chances are they probably have a Steel Terror type on the Konomo'o, which again, I don't really like. I don't like it that much. So I might go Milotic and Ninetales, try to set up the Roar Bell and maybe like a Coil Boost turn one, which I think would be really good, right? Especially if they go Konoma Oko Fairy, which I could definitely see happening. I would really like that. So I'm going to go Ninetales. I'm going to go Milotic. I'm going to bring Infernape in the back end. And then last but not least, probably either Articuno or Landorus. I mean, Landorus is going to be good with the Choice Scarf. If I have Terra Blast, it's going to be super effective onto the Ogre Pond. Not bad. And I kind of like that. I kind of like having Lando. But I have the Terror type. Yeah, I'm down with that. I'm definitely down with that. Lando is just pretty solid. It's fast. It can hit hard. I like it with the Choice Scarf, especially in the back end. Say we just need to outspeed a Pokemon and get off one hit to win the game, which a lot of times happens with the back end Pokemon. Lando is going to be the person to actually do it. So I like that. I like that. Articuno would have been solid too. I just I just really like Lando just for that type diversity. But he ends up going Clefairy alongside Milotic. And this is pretty solid because I do have Freeze Dry here. And I could just get off a freeze dry setup, but I think a roar bell is going to be an easy play. I think it's just a roar bell coil this turn, and we get the accuracy defense and attack boost at the same time, letting our hypnosis kind of land pretty freely. And I think they're trying to do the same thing, right? It makes sense. Have a Clefairy on the field, maybe just going for a follow me with a friend guard, and then just kind of going from there, right? And then coil set up. Yeah, it, it, it makes sense. But I'm thinking I can I can get after this. And he ends up going help and cancer. So what move are you going for? You're scaring me a little. What move would you be going for? A Scald, maybe? Hydro Pump? Into Ninetales? What are you, what are you, what are you cooking with, with the Helping Hand? 
You got some weird coverage move that, I'm, that I don't know of. Skull, okay. Never mind, that's fine. So he scolds me, that's totally fine. I think from here we just freeze dry you down. And we try to go for a hypnosis into Clefairy slot. Just so it's just done supporting, we don't have to worry about following me. We just put it straight to sleep, right? I could have honestly just coiled up again, which wouldn't be bad. Get that attack and defense boost again. But the only problem, it would actually be OP if it was a special attack boost instead of an attack boost, right? It would be, but you're really just using this, uh... You're really just using Cool to get the defense boost on top of the accuracy boost, so Hypnosis can work pretty freely. But he ends up swapping into Ogre. The so Ogre Pound comes out here, and this will be a big time Hypnosis lane, because we can put the Clefairy to sleep and kind of just get after the Ogre Pound that way. But Free Shot is going to come out here, going to deal a little bit of damage to Clefairy, nothing crazy, and Hypnosis is going to miss? I have an accuracy boost! I have an accuracy boost! So annoying. It really is. It's so annoying, but I'm just gonna go for another hypnosis. I'm looking to land it. I have the accuracy boost. That's exactly why I use Quill so I can land his hypnosis. And it's just not happening. It's just not happening. It's so annoying. So we're gonna go for another hypnosis here. We'll see what he wants to do. I think he's just going to mask up, right? Yeah. And probably take out my Nine Tails. Which, I mean, makes sense, right? Use it freely, but it kind of, it sucks, man. It really sucks. I maybe should terrestrialize my Milotic. I maybe should terrestrialize my Milotic because I, I always forget the same is part of this as well. If follow me comes out here, can we land this hypnosis this time? Let's see what he goes for. Actually, I'll speed him, which is not bad, but we're doing about like five damage. And the Ivy Cudger is going to come out here and he's just going to take out Ninetales, right? Ninetales is gone. That's fine. I mean, Ninetales got off the war, though. And can we land this hypnosis so we can, you know, start, start getting after it? Well, Milo, thank you, thank you, thank you, Milo. I appreciate that. So we get the Clefairy to sleep. Probably just gonna double down to Ogre Pond at this point. And we have a Grass Terror type, which is kind of scary, right? It's kind of scary to go into a Grass uh, Terror type. But I think from here we just go into Stop and Cancel into the Ogre Pond, right? We go into Lando. We have the speed we would be cooking. And we double down the Ogre Pond, who might, might spike each other. Definitely a chance. But he does not know of our stats. He does not know of our choice scarf, which is beautiful. So instead of wasting a Terra, I'm just gonna go in this. I'm just gonna choice into stop potential. It's sad, it's gonna do some big time damage. And I really want this to KO, and I would love to go into a coil. Do I coil this turn? I'm gonna coil this turn. I think I think stop and catch up KOs. Yeah, I'm gonna say stop and catch up KOs. And he's gonna spiky shield anyway. Okay, that's fine. So we go to the spiky shield. We coil up. We get another boost. So we're double accuracy boost. Our hypnosis should not be missing at this point. And Clefairy should not wake up here, right? There's no way Clefairy wakes up. There's no way Clefairy wakes up. So Clefairy is still slump. They could hard swap the Ogre Pond. Into who though? Back into Milo, which wouldn't be a bad call. But I'm still just gonna do this. Just in case Milo comes out here, I'm gonna put the sleep. Clefairy wakes up. Are you kidding me? Clefairy's really waking up there? That's so ugly. That is so ugly that you wake up there. I still have a war bell, which is nice. We deal some nice damage here, and Woodhammer's gonna come out here, which we should be able to see. Cool. Coil, Coil is helping us out tremendously. He's going to take some mean recoil damage here, and Hypnosis is going to put you to sleep. So, a spiky shield could come out here. I might just Coil up again. I think I'm just going to start Hydro Pump with the Clefairy slot. The snow is gone. We have three turns left in a War Bell, I believe. Yeah, that's beautiful. And from here, we're just going to stick with the Stop and Catch in the slot. And I'm just going to Hydro Pump down the Clefairy. I was going to Coil again, because you might see a hard swap, but... Could be a spiky shield. You never know. You never know. I just don't want to double down. But he ends up spiky shield again. That's totally fine. It's not that big of a deal. I can just get after it. We still have Infernape as a back in Pokemon, which I really like. Um Lando's chilling here. I like it. I like I like that we're choosing into stopping tension. The Hydro Pump could KO. There's a KO. It does. So we pick up the KO and a clip there. 
So we KO Clefairy, which is pretty massive. Um, and from here, where are they gonna go in? This, this is a solid battle. This is really good. Old. They're gonna end up going into Milo, I think. So Milo comes out here. Um, that is a little scary, right? Milo is definitely a little scary, but we're definitely gonna still have to stop and catch him this slot. And probably just put Milo to sleep. I'm just gonna put Milo to sleep. I'm gonna hope that this stop and catch him can just KO the. Uh, KO this, uh, this Ogre Pond. So Stop and comes out here. Can you just KO? His stab is super effective. Cool. Thank you. No overthinking it. And hopefully my Milo outspeeds. Because my Milo outspeeds, we got the plus two action boost, and I'm just hitting this thing with the boosts and putting it night-night. Making it go night-night. No, of course you won't speed me. But I'm able to soak. You're gonna get a burn. I have a weird feeling. Cool, you don't get a burn. Thank you, game. So night night to Milo, we still have the Infernape in the back end, and we still have Terror type as well. Infernape has a water terror type, which is it might help us out. I might have to save it. Now Fluttermane comes out here. So Fluttermane out and about. Lando should outspeed with the tree scarf, right? What is your speed? Like 120 with tree scarf? 140, even better. Yeah, you're out speed. So from here, we're gonna double down into Fluttermane. So I'm gonna go Hydra Pump. I'm gonna go in with Stop the catch him, and we're hoping he doesn't protect. We're hoping no protect comes out here. Cool, no protect. He's popping. Stop the catch comes out here. Whipping damage. Lovely damage. That is some lovely damage. And Stop it, and Shadow Ball comes out here to KO as well. That's fine. Can we land this Hydro Pump? Yeah, our accuracy is so high. We should have no problem landing this Hydro Pump. Which is beautiful for Cleo. Critical hit, awesome. That's why that's why coil is so good. You set up the coil, you, you're landing your hydro pumps, you don't really have to worry about it. And you got hypnosis at your landing. But now we get to bring out Infernape. This is a time where I really wish we had uh I really wish we had what's called a Thunder Punch. But at least we have the water terror type. So I'm gonna water terror type. I'm going to go into a drain punch. And I guess I'm just gonna just start spamming ice beam. Maybe looking for like freezes if this thing wakes up, you know? I mean, once it wakes up, I'm just going to put it back to sleep. That's the whole plan. I could protect the penis. I'm too bulky right now. And Milotic's really... Like, a Milotic's really not killing another Milotic, right? It's just not happening. It would take days. The Drain Punch comes out here. Doing a little bit of damage, which we love. We get HP recovery. And this is a perfect terror type up against Milotic. Because a lot of them rock either... Either what's it called? Either Scald or Ice Beam, like mine. Or Hydro Punch. Of course, this thing has lovely leftovers. But at this point, this battle is just going to take too long, so I'm just going to constantly drain punch and just spam hypnosis, right? <laughs> There's no point. We get 32 hypnosis, which is absurd. That's absurd, but opponent knows what we're doing. They're just going to cancel the battle, and that's a hot start for us with Inferno in the back end. Second match is on its way, and we're looking like we're going up against a team from last season, right? They got Lillaboom, they got Frigraph, they got Ursa Luna, so that's a little trick room combo. Then they're rocking out with Sneasel with Fake Out, then Hisuian Typhlosion, and Prankster Thunderous, which is a little annoying, right? Thunder is really powerful. But from here, they don't have any weather, so I could just go Weather Squad, set up Aurora Bell yet again, which would be pretty good for us, right? We love a good Aurora Bell, right? They do have Fake Out users. But at this point, they, they might just try to set up a trick room. Do I go same thing? Maybe just coil again with nine tails? Nah, I don't want to do the same thing. I'm gonna go Articuno nine tails. I'm gonna bring Infernape in the back end, and then if they want to set up trick room, because they do have a rather slow team with with uh, Rollaboom, Frigrip, and Ursaluna. I'm gonna bring Iron Hands just in case that's the problem. So we'll lock it in. We'll lock it down. We'll get the weather rolling here, considering they can't change the weather unless Thunder is rocking like Green Dance. But I highly doubt it. A lot of them are rocking Eerie Impulse. Which, that's a problem. Now, that's a problem. Eerie Impulse is a problem, especially with, with my lead. Because I am leading two special attackers, so Eerie Impulse. We don't like that. We really don't like that. But they end up going for Rigoraf and Milgram, so chances are he's going to try to fake me out here. Um, I could protect. Um, I could... Sp I could water... I might water Terra. And just... Terror Blast and Rolling because I think he's gonna rock into a uh I think he might go into a fire terror. I have an odd feeling about that. 
But from here, I'm just going to try to set up the roar bell. If you fake me out, you fake me out. And then on top of that, I'm just going to go for a nice blizzard. They're free right now. They're free, and we have a chance of freezing. Plus, it's super effective on the roll boom. I think he's going to throw Aslides. That's why I kind of want the water tower. But no, he doesn't. He doesn't even fake me out. That's odd. That's real odd. So we get off the big time of roar bell. No fake out. No terror comes out here. And blizzard gets covered. The blizzard's doing some nice damage. And he freezes. No freezes. And he chooses to U-turn. For nothing. So maybe he'll bring in Ursaloon here, which seems like the play. And pop a trick. Right, that makes the most sense. Yeah, Ursaloon comes out here. And he's gonna pop a trick. So I think now it's just like, okay, we're just gonna spam Blizzard with Articuno. And with Ninetales, I think we're just gonna use it to double down into for a grab, because chances are, oh no, I was gonna say, chances are Ursaloon protects to get his burns. Guts gone, but it already got it going because it's a U-turn. So from here, I think we just double down to Ursaluna then. Might too. It's probably Terrastalizing. I wouldn't want to stay ground type, but a lot of them are normal or ground terror type. A lot of them are more so normal. But I think he just goes into normal. I don't think he has a, a terror type to kind of counter ice like fire. But we'll see. This gotta be normal, right? You gotta be a normal boy. Yeah, you're normal. So if I can waste out these trick room turns, that could be pretty powerful for us, because then I can just bring it out. Infernape, Infernape can get some work done, and I love it. Rock Slide's gonna get cooking here, that's a perfect move. That's a perfect move. No flinches. Please no flinches. Seki's gonna follow through here, and we don't dodge any of that with our Bright Powder and our Snow Club. The Blizzard's coming through here, some nice damage onto Frigoraph, and three strides land in, so no flinches, which is pretty good. And we're doing some nice damage. So we are doing some lovely damage. So chances are they, they go for another Rock Slide. Chances are they go for another rock slide and they go for a psychic into my nine tail slot. So I am gonna protect. And we're gonna hope that we can dodge this rock slide with snow cloak and bright powder and get off another another blizzard. But if we don't, we don't, it's not the big deal. I can still throw out Iron Hands, so who's gonna be a pretty powerful Pokemon in the back end. And a facade's gonna come out here. You're not going for rock slide. So you just so I guess you're just psychic in me? Okay. That's fine. Did we dodge that? Oh, Bright Powder. I love you. I love you, Bright Powder. And Snow Cloak. Blizzard coming out here. We get off an extra turn here. Just massive. Just massive. So slowly wasting out Trick Room. Loving it a lot. We still have plenty of turns left in, in a war, but I think we have like four. We're getting after. We're getting after. Let's see. Five turns left in a war, but one turn left in Trick Room. So from here, I'm going to... I'd rather get rid of Fruit, right? I'd rather at least try to get rid of Fruit Graph. So I'll Blizzard, I'll go for a Freeze Shrine here. And he's just gonna Facade here. Which I think still might KO me through the War Bell. It's just such a hard hit move, right? Yeah. No big deal. So one turn left in Trick Room. I have Fake Out, but Fruit Graph's gonna be on the field. Can we dodge a Psychic again? Oh my god, I love you. <laughs> I love you, Articuno. I love this Articuno. This Articuno's killing it. We don't pick up the KO, which kind of sucks. Because if we picked up the KO, then we could have Faked Out next turn. But I can still bring out Iron Hands, who's gonna who's gonna thrive with this last turn. Or I could just bring out Infernape. No, we're not. I could bring out Infernape and just protect. Might be a better play all around. Yeah, I like it. I like it. So he's gonna bring out Thunderous here. We're simply just going to protect here. And then kinda get it try to get after that Thunder next turn. Thunder's kind of annoying, I'm not gonna scare you and lie. That is really annoying. I'll go for another blizzard if I can land it. I wish I had protect on Sardakuna at this point. So I would just protect. We'll see what he wants to do. We still have a chance to dodge moves. Because we just dodged back to back psychics, which were massive. It was massive. So we can't use first turn priority, which kind of sucks right now. But Infernape with a War Bell should be able to soak up a shot or two, which we like. Which we like. We know it's a not that bulky Pokemon, but with a War Bell, it really helps it out. I end up protecting your Psychic's just going to drop me. It finally lands in the slot. I wonder where you're going for with that Lando. Or um, Thundo. Yeah, Thunderbolt. Okay, so you can just Thunderbolt. Do we still have Terra, don't we? We do still have Terra. Snow stops. We have three turns left in the War Bell, which is pretty big for us. And from here, we're just going to Drain Punch and take out the Free Graph. Get rid of that, and ch -ch 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 -ch. we know he still has Robin in the back end. We know Robin's still there. So Robin's our final Pokemon. I like him for it. And Drain Punch gonna fly from here to finish you off. And 
I think we just wall charge. Get off as much damage as I can. The Frigograph protects. That's a smart little protect. Surprised you even have it. A lot of Frigographs don't rock protect. Rain Punch is going to get blocked. And again, we still have a War Bell, so as long as we don't really get paralyzed from the Thunderbolt, we should be fine here. Thank you, War Bell. Cool, no paralyze. So Wild Charge doing half damage. Oh, that's perfect. That's lovely. That's a lovely amount of damage. I can still Drain Punch you. And I go for another Wild Charge. That's so good. That's so good that we're doing that damage. We're doing half damage here. The Drain Punch gonna fly here. We're gonna get back a little bit of HP. And this match is actually gonna be really close. A bit too close because then he could just grassy glide me. Thunderbolt's gonna fly. No power, please. Cool. Wild Charge should be able to finish off, right? Beautiful. Okay, so now it's a 2v1. Rillaboom is the final Pokemon. Rillaboom is the final Pokemon. So we have a decent amount of HP. I think uh, Warville does end, or do we get one turn left? In it? One turn left would be massive. It'd be massive. As Rillaboom comes back out here, it can Grassy Glide. It can really get after it. We should be able to soak up a Grassy Glide, even without a Warville, which would be beautiful. And... Did they use Terra? Let's see. They did. They used it on Ursaluna. So we still have Terra ourselves. We do still have Terra ourselves. Um, I know he has U-turn. But I want to use my Terra. I do definitely don't want to uh, water Terra with uh, Infernape. So I'm just going to click Fire Punch. And from here, do I Terra water? No. We do, there's just no point of using our Terra type. We'll Drain Punch and we'll go into Fire Punch. And they just cancel battle. So killing it again 2-0 with Infernape on the rank ladder. Final match for today's video on its way, and we're already 2-0, killing it with Ninetales and Infernape. They got themselves a Grass Ogre Pond team with Rillaboom. Those two are going to pair up really, really well, especially because we have new terrain control. And then they're rocking out with War and Moon, Iron Bundle, Monkey Dory, who's a cool little Pokemon, and Fluttermane. So who am I leading here? Who am I leading? Do I set up another Aurorville? Snow Squad's pretty good here. Snow Squad is not too shabby. So you know what? We're going to go Snow Squad. We're bringing Infernape yet again, and in our final slot... I like the Lando. I like the Lando with the Choice Scarf. It can outspeed some of these Grass-type Pokemon. And on top of that, if we save our Terra-type for him, we can rock into a uh, Terra Blast with the Flying Terra. So, that could be pretty good. That could definitely be pretty good. But we're already 2 out. Already killing it with Infernape. Hopefully, you guys are enjoying the content. But Monkey Dory and Iron Bee comes out here. Shiny, shiny Iron Bee looks so sick. It does look sick. But from here... Hmm. I was going to say I could tear it in the water, but Warville definitely going to be your play. So I'm going to Warville up. And do I just go for a Tailwind? Yeah, I think I just try to take some speed for the rest of the squad. So I'm looking at Dory. I totally forgot it has Fake Out. He's going to Fake Me Out. And Bundle's going to set up a... Yo! Bundle setting up a Warville. That's out of nowhere. That's out of nowhere. What Bundle rocks a Warville? That's actually cool, though. It perfectly counters my team. It's actually perfect for Regulation E. Because a lot of Ninetales, a lot of Snow Squads are going to be here. But now we're going to try to set up our War Veil. And I'm just going to try to rip a Blizzard. Let's try to rip Blizzard. So we get off our War Veil. That's not too shabby. I might try to hard swap next turn. We'll see. Blizzard's going to fly here. Chunking up some decent damage to Monkey Dory. And we're going to freeze. We freeze the little Toxic Chain Monkey. How about that? How about that? I see one coming out here. going to slow us down a little bit. And I'm definitely going to try to swap nine times next turn. Monkey Dory's going to be frozen solid. And, yeah, I think I... Do I hard swap it into Infernape? Or I could hard swap it into Lando. Um, hmm. I do a freeze dry. Which I means going to be neutral into you. I think I'm just going to... I think I'm just going to keep spam moves. Let's just keep spam moves. So freeze dry comes out here. Doing decent amount of damage. We like that. I see one cooking here, so he's just matching speed. He's self tailing for a little bit. And now hit the iron bundle as fast as on the field. Monkey Dory is still frozen solid, which we, which we really like. We do like that a lot, because Blizzard cooking in here. It's doing some nice damage, and we have both down to the middle. This thing's black sludging, which is pretty pretty tough. And we're just going to keep spamming free stride and Blizzard. So we'll do that, because they definitely don't have Light Clay. I doubt they have Light Clay on their, uh, on their Iron Bundle. 
So if I could just keep spamming these turns and get rid of it, ho, 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 we get a crit. We like that. <laughs> we like the crit. So that's a big time crit. And my Infernape can really thrive in the back end. We really can. And Monkey Dory, I'm sorry, buddy. You're still frozen. Sorry for the bad RNG. We're dealing some nice damage there. Black Sludge coming out here. Giving it some more HP. I'm sorry, Monkey Dory. I feel bad. But now I'm going to try to set up another Tailwind for later usage. And just save our Terror type for Lando. Because if I had to guess, it's got to be Grass Ogre Pond and Wilbur in the back end. For sure, right? There's, there's no way it's not. I'd be, I'd be kind of surprised if it's not. Let's see. Rillaboom. Yeah. Okay, like, come on. It's got to be Ogre Pond. So from here, we are going to set up another Tailwind. Or let me at least try. And they didn't tear. I'm just gonna tackle on that monkey dory. Let's see if he goes for the fake out. Fake out comes out here. Let's slowly find into the nine tail slot. Monkey, yo, I, I'm apologizing. If, yo, if if I if if the person I'm versing watches Gene's videos, you're watching this video. I'm sorry. I feel terrible. Is that four turns, three turns with freeze? I'm sorry. I apologize. I really do. I feel bad. I feel very bad. I feel terrible. This hurts the soul. And their Aurora Bell wears off. So it wasn't like play after all. I feel so bad. I really do. But I'm going to double down the Monkey Dory just to get rid of it. I'm going to spam a Blizzard here. So Freeze Dry comes out here. This shouldn't KO it. And then Blizzard should be able to pick up KO. <laughs> I feel so bad. That's so bad. Real Boom dodged that, but we get rid of the Monkey Dory. I feel so bad. I really do. I really do. I really do. Drain Punch gonna come in here. We're gonna be able to soak that, which is lovely. I'm surprised he didn't Drain Punch the Nine Tails, but it's all good. I mean, it, it would be neutral in both. I think he's trying to get rid of the. Definitely trying to get rid of the. <laughs> the Articuno. But he brings back out you. And he's saving his mask for you. I think we just double down into it, right? How many turns left in the tailwind? Two. I'm just gonna freeze dry you. You might spike your shield. You might spike your shield. So I'll go for the blizzard land. And yeah, you are gonna spike your shield. Good call from us. Good call from us. These ogre ponds like the spiky show a lot. Free tries gonna come out here. Doing some nice damage. Real Boom's actually really bulky. That might be best. Might be a soul best. It ends up blocking the spiky shield. And are we land this blizzard? We do not. So he's gonna drain punch my Articuno. That's gonna KO me. And that's fine because now I get to bring out the void. Now I'm not playing around. Now you think I'm playing around. And now you can't spiky shield your uh your ogre pond either. I'm fire punching it, I think. I'm doubling down into it and I'm looking to get rid of it. And then we still have Lando in the back, end, which is just, it's going to work wonders. But that's something that kind of makes Ogre Pond kind of balanced in this meta. It's like Terra type is such a huge way to get out of sticky situations and change your typing. But with Ogre Pond, he's already so strong, they don't allow him to change his typing. The only thing he can do is just boost his attack damage and stay that typing. That's actually pretty cool. But from here, I'm double down to Ogre Pond. I want that thing going. I'm going to Fire Punch. I'm going to go into... Freeze dry, and we know Ogre Pond. Chances are not going for a double spiky shield. And if he does go for a double spiky shield, chances are he's not going to land a double spiky shield. Good old spiky shield, dude. I think spiky shield is such a good move. Only a few Pokemon learn it. It's just, an, it's just, it's just an upgrade of protect. It's like if you're playing a game and you want to upgrade your protect, that's what you would get. You would get spiky shield. But out comes the Terror type, and I think this has got to be Tear Mask Ogre Pond, right? Yeah. He's masking up. He's putting the mask on. And he's ready to go. He's ready to go. That's his problem, right? He's gonna get that special defense boost? Or what are you gonna get? Speed boost. And you're gonna grass guide in the You gotta knock that off. You're not doing that much damage to me. And I'm gonna fire punch you up. Bang. Ogre Pond. Down to red on one damage. Ivy Cudge is gonna be able to come out here. And is that going into Fernie? Where are you going into here? We eat. Yo, my boy's here to play. My boy came to play. You get a crit, too, and I'm still eating. Free Strike comes out here, and that's what's so good about a war belt in Infernape. Infernape is just like, he's not that bulky at all. 
So giving him a Roar Veil or a Pokemon that can set up screens next to him really helps him thrive because he hits really hard. He just doesn't take hits that much. Infernate killing it in today's video. And we're going to go 3-0 and on the rank ladder today. Awesome. I still have Lando in the back end if anything happens, but I believe they just cancel battle. But from here, I'm just going to freeze dry and I'm just going to protect my monkey because he might just grass glide into me. And we'll go from there. Get off some free freeze tries. Yep, there's a nice little grass glide. You don't want me to bring out Lando. Because once I bring out Lando, I terror and I finish you off. There's no, there's no shot this dude in this battle. The freeze try chunking up some damage. And does Grassy Terrain end? That'd be big if Grassy Terrain was on. Roar Veil's gone. And Grassy Terrain ends. So that even works even better. Because now I outspeed you and I can just fire punch rip into you. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. And there it is. Finally, the battle was canceled. Infernape going 3 0. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Infernape on the rank ladder. Absolutely killing it. This Pokemon does learn fake out, so if you need a fake out user, it can also rock out that way. But this moveset was pretty perfect. Train punch, fire punch, really rocking out great because it's a stab, and then you got mock punch for first turn priority. But again, pairing it up with Ninetales, which we use in all the battles with the War Bell, was top tier. It really was. You got Milo Tick to set up the cool boost, get going from there, and then the rest of the Pokemon just really thrive all together. Iron Hands, Landers, Articuno, perfect team right here. Would love for you guys to rent this team and use it on the rank ladder. But guys, that is gonna be it for today. This video if you did enjoy the content don't forget to smash that like button for me and if you're new here click that big red subscribe button so you know when all of my videos go live seriously you guys rock out make sure you spread some positivity today and i'll catch you on the next one peace out everybody